Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. We are going to be solving the valid Sudoku problem here on Lead Code with TypeScript, of course. Yeah, betcha. Medium. Uh oh, no bueno. Apparently, a lot of people got this question in their interviews. I'm not sure why that is. What's so special about it? Maybe their boss. My theory is that their bosses maybe uh, just are not working and they spend time playing Sudoku. So they're just like more biased towards this question. But regardless, let's solve it so you have it under your tool belt and you know, you never know, you might make a popular puzzler game in the future and you'll need to understand how this how this stuff works. So there's one thing, one thing only ask from you guys, a little sub, a little like, that's it, that's two things. Sponsors today, they can wait, they can suck it, let's go. Okay, so if you never played Sudoku before, let's, let's read the question. So you have a nine by nine grid, basically a board and for each row, uh, must contain the digits one through nine without any repetition. And same for the columns and same for these three by three sub boxes. So I kind of drew this out quickly here. So if this green is the row, basically in this little row here, you cannot have duplicate values. So it must be one to nine, right? So we cannot have another seven in here or we cannot have another five in here. For this one, right, we kind of have another six, one, nine or five in these empty cells. And then same goes for the columns as well so in here my mouse broke so it just kind of lets go now uh, but here for example right we kind of have a five six eight four or seven in these empty cells okay and then you also have this little subgrid here which looks like this right so all of these in this like three by three column can also not have uh, duplicate values. So when you hear like duplicate values a lot, uh, when it comes to lead code especially, and if you're looking for a data structure, you need to think of sets, right? Hash sets. Uh, they're great because you can just add the value in there and then you can check in constant time if there's a duplicate in there or not. And lookups are constant as well. They're fantastic. So let's see how we would implement something like this. Um, so let's go up here to the top. I'll just drag this to the side here. We are in NeoVim. Let's create a set. So I can just call it like that, new set. Cool. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to check each of these rows. And if you look here, we essentially have like a, a, like a 2D array, right? We have an array within arrays. So if I do a loop here, let's do for let i set that equal to zero, i is smaller than the board dot length. And let's just increment that. Okay, so if we console log out here the board i, uh, why do I have a let outside here that needs to go in? There we go. Cool. Okay, so this was this loop do. We're essentially, since this is like a 2D array here, we're just essentially going through it like this. So this would be the first iteration. And then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. And I'll just leave an empty space in here just so this is easy to see and easy for you to understand. So I'll just pop in another console log with empty space. Okay, so if we run this, check it out. Okay, so this is what we get back. That's the first iteration, second, third, fourth, etc. Cool. Okay, so now that we went through each row, we can do another for loop here to essentially go through each individual value in that row. So let's do that for let j equals zero. j is smaller than board i now, right? Because we need to go through this board i uh, and uh, uh, j plus plus now. Cool. And then we need to add this here as well. Cool. Okay. So normally when you do these lead code problems, when you have something like this, when you have two loops, it's generally not too great because that's O of N squared. But in this case, we have a fixed board, right? It's nine by nine. So this is not gonna cause any like issues performance wise. Uh, but now in here, we essentially have access to each individual cell. So if I do con cell, that's basically equal to uh, board I J. Okay, so let's go here. If I console log this out now, if I say cell, this should iterate through each individual one, right? On the first iteration with I, we go in here like this, right? And then J is gonna go one by one in here, like 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so let's have a look at that, see if that works. Run this, we have a syntax error. What's the error? Here we are always missing these bloody semicolons. There, let's get rid of that. Okay, let's try to run this now. Another thing that we're missing here is the length, so let's add that. Let's run, and there we go, look at that. We are mapping through each individual number. Now, as you can see here, we have dot for the empty ones, and we essentially can skip through this. And the way you can do that is with continue. So we can say cons, uh, if cell triple equals, and we have the dot there, we can just simply continue. There we go. So now if we just take this and put it down below, you're gonna see that we're essentially skipping through the value. So we go five, three, skip, skip, seven, skip, 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 six. All right, so we should get five, three, seven, six. So if we look at this again, let's run this again. There we go, five, three, seven, six, one. Now here's the cool trick that we're gonna use. We're essentially gonna save the column and the row and where each cell is in the template literal. And we're gonna use that to look up our hash set. So let's start off with the row. This is gonna be super easy to understand. So we're gonna say our row is basically I, right? That's our row. And the call as the cell is gonna be the, well, we have it saved up here, right? We saved it. So there we go. So let's have a look, console log row. If we run this, let's have a look from here, right? So on the first iteration, this is the green, this is I. We're looking here and we're checking on row zero. Okay, we have five. On row zero, we have cell three. On row zero, we have cell seven. And then we I, we increment I, we go to the next iteration. And then we have six, one, nine. And then we keep, keep going down and down. Okay, cool. Now for the column, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. So if we go here, we can say cons column is equal to template literal call. We're gonna use J now, right? And the cell is still gonna be the same. So we're gonna say cell. So console log call. And now if we have a look, run this. As you can see in the call zero, now we only have five there. So there we go, this is the second iteration here. So we're checking here on column one, we have cell three, so we save that. On column four here, so we skip, we essentially skip here twice, right? Skip, skip, and then we go to seven, and there we go, we have on column four, we have seven. And that's it, there's nothing else, so we skip on I here, skip, 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 and then we start over again, we start right here, right? So we check six now, there we go, on column zero we have six, and then we keep going through one by one. Now next up, what we need to do is get the box number. We need to see like where we are, right? So if we're in the three here, we need to know like which box we are in. Are we in the first box here? Are we in the middle box here or the last box? Now how can we do that? Well, we can simply use math.floor, and this is the cool little trick here. So let's call this uh, box number. And what we're gonna do is say three times, and we're gonna say math.floor, and we're gonna say i divided by three, plus math.floor j divided by three. Now this doesn't make any sense yet, don't worry, I'll explain it to you, but let's just console log this out. So we can say box, I'll do the template literal again, I'm gonna say box number is gonna be the box number, and then I'll also add the cell here. So I'll just say comma cell is gonna be the cell that we have. Okay, so let's console log out the box and then I'll show you why this works. So let's go here, run this, and let's see for the cell five, right? We are in box zero. Cell three, we are in box three. Now for the cell seven, we are in the middle box here, right? If you can just like imagine there we go, I'll make this a different color, make it a blue. Can I make this thicker in any way? Who knows? But it detects that it's in one, right? So it clearly works.
So I think an easy way to visualize this is actually to put I and J up here as well. So I'll just put I and J at the top before we see what the box number is. Okay, so I'm just console logging this out. Console should have added the log. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we can easily see. So if we run this again, let's head up here to the top and let's just take the first example. So right here, okay, this line here. So I and J is zero, okay? That's for number five. So box number zero, cell five. So if you just plug in the zero values here, right? I and J is zero. If we have a look, we basically say three times map.floor is zero divided by three. This is gonna be zero. And here is gonna be zero as well. So it's gonna be three times zero basically, which is gonna give us that. Okay, now for the three here, we have zero and one, right? I is still the same row, but we move J over by one. So J is one, so we are in cell number three. Now, if we do the same logic, three times math.floor I, this is zero again, plus J here is gonna be one divided by three, which is gonna be 0 0.33, whatever. Uh, but since we're math.flooring, we're essentially putting it back to zero. So we're getting the same result, right? Three times zero is gonna be zero again. Now for the seven here, this should be in the box number one, uh, which is gonna be this little section right here. Okay, so how did we figure that out? Well, on the seventh here, I is still zero because we're on the first row, right? But J is four, so zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so how does that work? Well, we do three times math.floor, this is zero again, plus, but look at this, in this case, math.floor is four, divided by three, which is gonna be 1.33. But if you map the floor it, it's basically one. So since this becomes one now, uh, it's gonna be three times zero, which is gonna be zero, plus one, right? So one, and then we just keep doing this for every single number, and that way you can get the box that that specific cell lies in. And this is just a really, really cool trick uh, that you can do that I absolutely love. So all the logic is pretty much hooked up. So now we can just check the row, the column, and the box. So we can say if uh, the set has the row, or we can add the or symbol, set has the um, column, or There we go. Or the set has the box, right? So if we have it, uh, then we can return false because that means that it's a duplicate. And what we can also do here is to push that in. So set.add, and we can do the row, we can add the column, and we can add the box as well. And there we go. So we essentially just combine all of these together like that. How cool is that? And that's it. At the end here, we can simply return true. There we go. If we paste this in lead code, you're gonna see that it has a pretty good beat score here, 65.39, and it has five milliseconds of runtime. So there we go. That's the Sudoku challenge. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next challenge. See you soon.